H three is a hypocrite. Mm. I didn't watch the podcast, Isn't but this nice? guy says he's a hypocrite, Isn't and I nice? didn't have any content today, so I'm going to post a video, and I don't really yeah. care about what it actually means. I'm news, but I don't actually look at things beyond hey. surface value. I'm Keemstar. But I really... make news for twelve year olds. Uh, well, I'm back, and uh, guess we're going to be talking about H three and Keem right now. Um, it's not just going to be me. Well, I am going to be fucking rambling the whole time, but um. Because, you know, that's what I do. But I actually wrote down some notes this time, so we can actually go through this shit. Um, so, yeah, let's start off with what's most recent, because there's a lot of different aspects to this. Um, some of it's two, three years old. Most of the Keem allegations are pretty fucking old. Um, so, yeah, uh, about, a, I want to say, like, three weeks ago, um, H3. No, three weeks ago. I think it was actually last week. Was it? Okay, it was about two weeks ago. Um, H3H3, you know, Ethan and Nila, um, they uploaded a video called Content Nuke about Keemstar. I guess they, uh, I guess Ethan uh, wanted to expose Keemstar on some stuff. Um, honestly, I think the, uh, the video wasn't really that good, and I think that a lot of the heat, I, well, personally, from what I've been seeing, I think a lot of the heat is landing on Ethan, Rather than um, Keem. And I think mostly the big thing about that is, um, well, the the stuff that he talked about Keem, uh, he talked about uh, Glory for Gold, who um, was a Twitch streamer who Keem falsely accused uh, as being a pedophile. Um, like a lot of the ac accusations he made um, were old stuff. Everyone knew about it already. Like it wasn't anything new to the community. We all knew Keem did this stuff. Uh, he had apologized for the pedophile allegations. Keem's kind of an asshole. I mean, there was the content cop. And, of course, Leafy and Grade betraying Keem. So, like, this this type of drama with Keem wasn't exactly new. Uh, yeah. So, a lot of the points that H3 came up with were pretty old. So, when Keem made a response, um, a lot of the attention was brought to H3 because uh, he was not known for being criticized by people. Well, he has more recently, but... Back when Keem had originally been outed in 2016, uh, most people were on H3's side. He was a really respected content creator. Uh, there's also two major aspects that I think H3 was completely in the wrong in about making this video. And um, one of them, I think, uh, I was listening to the uh, Mom's Basement about this, and uh, I believe Banks made this point, um, was that the whole video seemed like it was basically made just to accuse Keem of... Um, of uh, being responsible for Etika's death. And that did not sit with, well with me. That entire point of his video I thought was really fucked up. So yeah, it was Etika's death and um, Ethan's use of uh, uh, Keem's sponsored G Fuel. I think those are the two main things that kind of um, is are like fucking over Ethan, basically. I think he was, he was in the wrong for doing this type of stuff. Okay, so first I want to talk about um, Etika. Because, um, well, I had... <laughs> Um, I was a viewer of Etika. He was one of my favorite YouTubers, so, um, I don't know. If you don't know, Etika, uh, he was a YouTube streamer. He made videos. He was really big in the Nintendo community, uh, Smash Bros. He played Fire Emblem. Uh, yeah, he was a really great content creator. He's super entertaining. Um, and then, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, his channel got deleted because he had a mental breakdown and he posted some... Uh, pornographic images on his uh, uh, his YouTube channel. And so, yeah, and then that led to a series of other stuff, which eventually um, Etika ended up killing himself um, a little under a year ago. And, uh, yeah, that was really bad. And that was, um, that's the main point that Ethan was kind of trying to make, is that Keem was in some way responsible for Etika's death. And um, I, well, first of all, I didn't agree with that, simply for the fact that um, Ethan was basically weaponizing um, Etika's suicide to criticize Keem for some of the questionable and in poor taste like things he said to Etika or tweeted about Etika. And I think that whole thing's fucked up. Honestly, uh, I don't believe Keem. Uh, I, can I say that he had, like, for sure that he had no effect on Etika or he contributed at all to uh, his eventual suicide? I can't. But I really do not think that if, if Keem's um, poorly worded uh, tweets and stuff had any effect on um, 
Attica choosing to commit suicide. I really don't think it was it was much at all. Um, Etika really liked uh, watching Drama Alert. I remember watching um, Drama Alert on some of his streams. Uh, yeah, so... Anyways, I don't think... There was a lot of stuff going on with Etika at the time, especially with the subreddit, and people thought he was faking. It was, like, a whole thing. And we don't actually, like... You know, as a viewer, you don't actually know, like, what Etika's, like, actually going through. So I don't think that's a fair criticism at all to blame Etika, Etika's death on um, Keemstar. And it's just fucked up that, you know, he brought up, he literally just brought up Etika's suicide as a point to use against Keem in this fucking video. Like, that's fucked up. He's what, he's literally weaponizing someone's suicide. Someone fucking took their own life. Etika took his own life. And H3 is just using this as like a bullet point in his fucking video to be like, Keem's a fucking asshole. And I think that's super screwed up. And he honestly he caught a lot of flack for it. And I think it's deserved. And the second aspect, um,. Oh, actually, before I move on, I wanted to show a clip um, because it was very clear in the video that uh, Ethan was insinuating that Keem um, is the cause of Etika's death. And that is just so fucking horrible to accuse of someone. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show the clip. So let's just roll the clip. It is quite a coincidence when you consider that only 51 days later, that very same YouTuber jumped off a bridge to his death. I think it's very clear in the clip that Ethan is definitely insinuating that Keem um, is the cause of Etika's suicide. And the context before is that um, Etika went on Drama Alert for a review for an interview with Keem, and Keem is, he's talking about simulation theory and like, you know, if we live in a simulation, then what's the point of living? We could just jump off a cliff, like, the, why would we have any purpose? And like, obviously, like, Keem didn't really um word it properly or whatever but like you like i understand what he was saying is like you know there's like obviously a purpose like we don't live in a simulation otherwise like it wouldn't be worth living life and so basically ethan's kind of skewing and he's like okay look uh he's telling etika like what's the point we should just jump off a cliff and then he's like well etika 51 days later jumped off the uh manhattan bridge and uh it's very it's very clear that he's insinuating that keem was a direct cause of Etika's suicide, and I just do not think that's the case. And that is a really lofty and um, uh, un. It was like unfound. It's like an unfounded criticism of Keem to say that he fucking caused Etika's death. And uh, Christine, his ex girlfriend, and Etika's mom have both defended Keem Star for this. They're like, he's not. A, he was very helpful during like Etika's like mental breakdown and stuff and that like he shouldn't be blamed for his death so I definitely think it's really fucked up of Ethan to bring up this point and insinuate that Keemstar was like at all had any like direct effect on Etika's like death like I do not think that Keemstar like at all um is a main reason for why Etika killed himself so yeah um the second point uh this is a really big one is um uh Ethan attacked <laughs> Ethan attacked Keemstar's sponsors um, and we got a clip for this too, so let's roll it. How is G Fuel still sponsored this guy, by the way? G Fuel brought to you by false pedophilia accusations. God, chug it, G Fuel. Get it now at GFuel.com. Go, go fuck, fuck you. And here's here's the main issue I have with that clip is that it sets a fucking horrible precedence um, in the YouTube community. And a lot of YouTubers have talked about this. Uh, one video I've seen was by Critical. And um, yeah, so the fact that Ethan attacked Keem's sponsor, G Fuel, um, sets a horrible precedence for the entire rest of YouTube because, you know, you can literally take anything out of context, send it to a person's sponsors, and they're going to drop them. And they're just going to lose their fucking livelihood because of this shit. And it's happened to Ethan. People um, attacked keem sponsors for g fuel so g fuel dropped keem keem's um his cotton candy flavor g fuel and his shaker or whatever the fuck it was you can't buy it on the site anymore uh they don't sponsor keem anymore his recent drama alerts he doesn't have the fucking g fuel on his table anymore and um ethan uh lost a sponsor from old spice because uh people uh were sending old spice clips of when uh ethan had idubs on the h3 podcast and he said uh you know the n-word f-word nigger faggot nigger faggot whore nigger faggot <laughs> nigger faggot <laughs> nigger faggot you know like if you watch idubs you know exactly what like what he said he's basically said the n-word and then like the f-word but for gay people like not fuck 
He didn't say fuck. He said, you know. Okay, anyways. So they sent him and Old Spice dropped him. And so basically, this is like a horrible precedence to send because now people will start attacking someone's sponsors if they don't like them. You know, if you like have a fucking issue with anything for views, you can just take any shit that he says and then send it to some of his sponsors and he's fucked. He just lost his livelihood for that shit. Or, um, yeah, it's like, it's really bad for the community now. And it's, um, I think the big issue is that, like, this has happened before in the past. Um, Keem has even done it, like, five or six years ago. He attacked, uh, Sore sponsors. Many of these teams are big. They have lots of sponsors. And at the same time, they're being racist, homophobic, and trying to convince other children to kill themselves. And they are sponsored by Elgato. Loot Crate, Scuff Controllers, and Cyber Power PC. Why are these sponsors sponsoring such a team? But most of the cases are isolated and they were on a very small scale. And uh, most of the time they didn't really lead to anything. Sponsors didn't usually like drop or something like that. But um, yeah, so Ethan has basically um, made it super, like this video has, uh, let me check how many views it has actually. Okay, this video has 6 million views, um, which is, I would say, at least, like, four or five times larger than a fucking, like, one-off drama alert where Keemstar mentions fucking, like, sore sponsors. So, like, this is, he's a very prevalent creator in YouTube, on the YouTube space, and he's calling, well, he didn't call for it, but he's insinuating, like, you know, why is G Fuel with this guy if, like, Keem is so heinous? And so people, his fans, have taken it into their own hands to attack his sponsors and so basically now everyone has seen like on this like very this is very public a very large video and everyone has seen that he's like basically gone after the sponsors and so people have this idea now that if you don't like it like if you don't like shit that someone stands for or whatever we can just attack their sponsors like a fucking sjw karen whose fucking uber driver wasn't the best and she fucking like reports him to a goddamn manager to try and get them fired you know it's fucked up because like you're literally taking away people's livelihood for like a disagreement and we can go into the fact of like if like you know if it was um you know necessary or like if it was justified to like specifically keems but that's like not what i'm talking about like the fact is well, I don't think that G Fuel should have dropped Keem. I don't think um, what he did was, you know, it was bad, but, like, he apologized for it. It wasn't, like, meant to be. Anyways, so this is such a really bad precedent because we can we can fucking target anyone. Anyone is fucking at the mercy at the, um, at the mob mentality of people's fans now if they attack each other. So this is, like, a really bad fucking precedent that he started on YouTube. Okay, and now I want to talk about um, Keem's response uh, to the... Uh, content nuke uh keem he made one video um specifically talking about the etika shit and then he made a second video that was his last video on the topic uh with like an asterisk but i'll talk about that later um it was his last video on the topic and he debunks like all the shit um i have a clip for it uh roll it why am i still getting hate nah i'm just fucking you that was from 2016 but um yeah keem uh made some accusations about uh ethan and uh, he kind of went after Glory for gold um, a little bit. And uh, yeah, so the video was kind of shit, honestly. But because um, some of the stuff that Ethan criticized him for, I mean, like, was obviously valid because, like, you know, it was known for. Like, the Glory for gold, false pedophile stuff, that was obviously shit with FuzzyTube. Um, that has some weight, I think it does. Um, so yeah, after Keem posts that, and this is the asterisk part I was talking about, uh, Keem re uploads a video by uh, a YouTuber named Gokanaru. And so this video is called The Death of H3H3 Video Vigilante. And, um, I, you know, I woke up and I saw this video and I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it. And uh, about an hour later when I go to watch it, uh, it's been taken down by YouTube. And so basically, Keem is re-uploading a video that was uh, taken down um, a couple months ago for harass for creator-on-creator -creator harassment. And uh, so Go Kanaru is the second aspect I really want to talk about in this video. So Gokunaru, about two years ago, made a video called The Death of H3H3, which is what Keem re-uploaded. Um, and basically what uh, this video goes into, how Ethan is a hypocrite, um, Ethan is greedy, Ethan um, only is like... He only brings his friends onto the podcast. And that's what the, the main th criticism of this video is not actually like Ethan's like content not the h3 h3 content 
on his main channel, the video was mostly focused on the H3 podcast. And honestly, that's like where I personally think that um, Ethan started getting a lot of fucking hate is when he stopped making like skits, like uh, like skit reaction video comedy. You know, stuff like Vape Nation or like uh, the Bradbury Brothers. What's up guys, I'm Mo Bradbury. I'm Ethan Bradbury. I'm Ethan Bradbury. When he stopped doing that and he started to turn all of his focus onto the H3 podcast, that's where I think people started to hate Ethan more. And because we, because we would see Ethan, he he live stream it right. So we would see Ethan in his like Ross form. If he fucks up, everyone sees it. We know like he talks about shit, so we all hear his opinions. Which is why I think that um, because it's not edited, it's not he's not cherry picking all the parts of the video that he wants to upload. So he's like totally raw and uncensored. And I think that's um where he became the most ripe for the picking of criticism. Anyways, I think that uh, Goku Naro's video. Um, I think it's a really great video from a small YouTuber. He's about 150,000 subscribers right now. So he's gotten a substantial, f he's like a substantial following at this point. I think, I think a hundred thousand more, you start to like get like a lot more of a presence on YouTube anyways. Um, so Gokunar's video is really good. I suggest watching it. I'll put a link in the description to an, um, off YouTube site where you can watch it. And, um, uh, a YouTube name by Star Killer. Um, made a response to it. And I think that's also a very good companion piece to um, to Goku Nari's video because he um, kind of goes into like stuff that he might have issues with. And then in response to that, Goku Nari makes a very good um, Google Doc because he didn't want to make a whole video about it. So he responds to some of the criticisms about Starkiller. So those three things I think are really good for showing like for uh, understanding the death of H3 video because you have the actual video you have um you have star killer's criticism of it and then you have gokunaru um, responding to his criticism and he also goes more into detail about aspects of his video that uh he thought he could do better so i'll put all three of those in the description and uh yeah uh, i think those are all really good to get a lot of context for what this video is actually doing and so um h3 uh ethan sees this obviously or not, but like on his podcast, he references it. Uh, he says like, you know, like, um, actually I actually have a clip of it. So let's just watch it right now. What have people been saying about me recently? That I'm a hypocrite, that I prioritize money over everything else, that I've thrown friends under the bus, that I'm ignorant and poorly informed and spread misinformation, that I'm arrogant, that I cannot handle criticism and that I've used people. Um, and let me just say this, okay, for the record, that I am guilty of all of those things. And I'm not going to quantify it or make excuses or anything. I'm not surprised that so many people have watched this podcast and been like, whoa, that's not the guy I thought he was. Mm. Or people who were making videos about like all the things I mentioned. Because, yeah, it is it is all in here. Everything you guys have said bad about me and that you've noticed, all my bad personality traits and all that, it is, it's all in here. I said those things, I did those things, I am that person, and it's good, it's good to acknowledge that and feel that and be like, uh, you know, it's good, you gotta, you gotta accept that. So Ethan, you know, he apologizes for the shit, uh, Gokunar gave him a lot of respect for just kind of owning up to it and apologizing, uh, Ethan doesn't bother mentioning Gokunaru, I'm sure, like, that's totally understandable because he doesn't want to bring more attention to the video that's fucking an hour and a half long and criticizing him, uh, but what happens after it is, uh, gave a lot of criticism to Ethan and that's, um, uh, with the content on, on content harassment rules that came onto YouTube, uh, Gokunar's video got deleted. And since Gokunar, uh, was a, is a bit of a small channel, uh, it would be, it led to some people thinking that there was some foul play and that, um, Ethan might've told, uh, the CEO of YouTube to get rid of it because, um, he had the CEO, um, Susan Wojcicki, um, he had her on his podcast and they were there to talk. I haven't seen the podcast, but um, from what I've read about it, they talked about, you know, like uh, creator issues. And uh, he's obviously he's aware of Gokunar's video because he apologized for it. Um, I had it before the podcast where he talks to Susan. Um, he uh, it's seen in his search bar in an earlier podcast that he knows of Gokunar's because Gokunar's uh, name comes up in his search bar. And so people were thinking like, Ethan uh, talked to uh, Susan Wojcicki and he got her to remove the fucking video. That's why, um, you know, that's why Gokunar's video got deleted for harassment. 
And, uh, yeah. So that kind of caused a lot of criticism to be thrown Ethan's way because we, you know, the community thinks that he got this fucking video criticizing him, deleted off of YouTube. And, uh, obviously he denied it. Um, later we found out that Shoe Nice, um, I don't know if he actually is the one who got it deleted, but he, uh, flagged the video a lot of times for harassment. And, uh, that might've been the reason why it got taken down. Anyways, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the questionable parts of itself because, um, despite the creator on creator harassment, I think the video actually got taken down for, uh, simulated violence. And, um, he, I think Okunara got a lot of flack for that shit. And, uh, he explains in, um, his video about it getting taken down, like what, like it was like, it wasn't just like him fucking shooting, um, yeah, uh, Ethan, it was about him. It was like an artistic type of thing. He wanted to make the video like entertaining and, and like theatrical and stuff. So he goes into about how like, it's like, um, like the meaning of certain shots that he does and, um, how it's like connected to the book crime and punishment anyways. Um, yeah, I thought that was actually kind of interesting. Like we're hearing about, uh, like what he was trying to do with the skits in the video. Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, no one actually talks about Gokunaru by name, and I thought that was kind of weird. Like, all the big YouTubers, and, um, I have a, uh, I want to show a clip of a montage of people just, like, refusing to mention Gokunaru by name that he put in his own video. Some guy that we don't know that made a video about it. Found a video that was critical of H3H. The guy who did that commentary video on H3. I can't say the actual title. In terms of what I'm aware of. Why they censored the thumbnail. What are you talking about? He was holding a gun. Do not speak his name. And yeah, so his video got taken down, so yeah, it's not on YouTube anymore. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the H3 podcast response to Go Kunara's video. Because, you know, since Keem brought uh, new life to it uh, by <laughs> re-uploading it onto his channel, with he re-uploaded it, he re-uploaded it with Go Kunara's permission. He said that on Twitter that Keem came to him about re-uploading it. And so Ethan uh, decides on the podcast he's going to respond to some of the criticisms, even though he's already apologized for the stuff. And he's it's like very clear that he saw the video. He's going to watch the whole thing, talk about it. He's going to bring in guests who were mentioned in the video. Like some of Garkinara's points were about Shoe Nice and um, uh, John Tron, you know. Uh, so Ethan was going to bring them in the podcast and talk about like, you know, their role in the video and if they like really felt that way. And, um, so it's a three hour podcast. I watched the whole thing. Uh, I had a few, I had a few major issues with it. Um, but there was definitely some, there was definitely some weight to what Ethan said to defend himself. Uh, a lot of it, you know, looking back on it, I can, uh, admit Gokunaru did a lot of speculation. He kind of didn't have any hard like facts, but he's like, okay, you know, Ethan's demeanor kind of looks like it's like this. You can tell some of the guests might be uncomfortable about this and that, you know. So yeah, um, but my main issue with it is that um, Ethan, uh, he didn't watch the whole fucking video on stream. He would be like, you know, it's a long video. We don't have a lot of time. We're gonna skip through some of these parts, and he's missing like some of the like specific criticisms that I would have liked to have him see, or he's missing some of Gokunaru's actual explanations. The big one that shows up uh, that happens for me is that he skips chapters, I believe, seven and eight, which are talking about how Ethan goes on these rants, like political rants and stuff, on his podcast. Um, from articles I read, and then he's like, oh, shit, well, I guess it wasn't actually talking about this. Like, he goes in this rant about how America's so fucked up because, you know, like, Amazon workers can't pee, and they have to piss in balls or whatever, but the article was about something that's going on in the UK. And the big one is um, his criticisms of the Catholic Church, where he said that, you know, what what is the Catholic Church doing? You know, they all just, they just have fucking pedophile rapists, you know, like, they don't actually fucking... What does the Catholic Church actually fucking do? What exactly does the Catholic Church do except rape kids? I would have loved to see him, you know, talk about that and, like, be, like, respond to that shit. But, of course, he fucking skipped it. So, he, like, he would skip around through it. And I, I didn't think that was very good. That kind of fucking annoyed me. Um, some of the... He would talk about some of the points being in bad faith. But he would skip through it so he missed the explanation. So... But some of the... Some of them... Uh, in bad faith, uh, I believe were true criticisms, and that kind of is kind of kind of comes with the territory with making an exposed video about someone is that 
Um, obviously, some there's going to be some manipulation to an extent about like clips that might be taken out of context or context that might not be mentioned. Um, but yeah, another thing I want to talk about is uh, the video is two years old. So there would be times where they would be talking about it and Ethan would be like, well, obviously this isn't because of this thing that happened, but that happened after the fucking video was made. So it's not a, like a legitimate uh, thing to bring up. And then the last point is that he kept he kept talking about Go Kanaru's fucking room, about how dirty it is and shit. And I was like, dude, like, you, like this video is about criticizing you and you're just you're focusing on clowning on him about his goddamn room instead of the goddamn points he's making. Uh, like, what the fuck? So yeah, um, that's about all I want to talk about in terms of Gokunaru. There is a video I wanted to bring up about Gokunaru, though. I think, Gok I, honestly, I watched some of the videos on Gokunaru's channel, and he's like, fucking, he's a great uh, content creator. I really like his shit. And he does long-form content, too. His video, Vigilante, about um, the Monkey Jones situation, it's great. I'll link it in the description. I highly recommend watching it. It's very good about like the fucked-up shit that goes on on YouTube and how... You know, it's their, like, practices are inconsistent. And YouTube basically was out to get Mumkey Jones. Like, they fucked him up. And Mumkey Jones was a good content creator. I think he has a new channel. Uh, I don't really know. Anyways, um, so, yeah. I, I guess that kind of wraps up what I want to talk about this situation. Um, just to bring it back. I think uh, definitely Ethan started getting a lot of criticism when he started the podcast. I think that's when H3H3 Productions uh, started their decline was when the podcast came up because you know they didn't have the same content that got them to where they were it was kind of like they became corporate shills which like listen i understand that you, know, you got to make money if this is your livelihood and if the fucking youtube's fucking you over because of monetization and a podcast is a way for you to get like consistent sponsors and stuff i understand that but it's just like the main channel suffers like we don't get the same content that we used to and i don't watch h3 anymore because all his is fucking podcasts and that shit's, like, boring for me to watch. It's not entertaining like Baited or Mom's Basement is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's all I really want to say. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video or whenever I post that shit. Take care of yourselves and please have yourself a damn good one.